Canada is so expensive. Eh? 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 Kikiski, ganga, okay. Ah. <laughs> No, but seriously, Canada is so expensive. You guys, don't allow anybody to deceive you. I'm just jumping right into that point, okay? Because, yeah, let's, there's no need for us to beat around the bush before we get to that point. Canada is freaking expensive. And please, 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 I don't want any of those arguments that come and say, You're aiming in, in Canadian dollars, but you're, you're calculating in Naira. I want to be expensive. Or you're aiming in pounds, or you're aiming in dollars, or you're aiming in euros, and you're calculating in, in Naira. Why would it be expensive? <laughs> Please don't insult my intelligence, okay? I am not even doing that calculation, okay? I am judging based on the ratio of your expenses to how much you earn, the ratio of your tax to how much you earn, the ratio of your day-to-day -day spendings to how much you earn, okay? Now, from my calculations, the average person in Canada is living better than the average person in Nigeria. No cap, that's, that's just the fact of life, okay? The average person in Canada can afford so many things, so many nice things, so many good things that the average person in Nigeria cannot afford. Okay? And even that, there are some nuances to it, okay? It's not that straightforward. There are some nuances to it, but let's just say on average, the average person living in Canada, in Canada is living a better life than the average person living in Nigeria. Now, when it comes to the above average person in Nigeria, in my opinion, though, they are doing better financially than the above average person here in Canada. Because from what I have seen, from what I have heard so far, Canada kinds of kind of keeps everybody in the middle somehow because the higher you earn, the higher, the higher your tax. And taxes are already high to begin with, but the higher you earn, the higher your taxes. So somehow, it's like almost like everybody falls within one kind of range. Like everybody lives almost the same type of life. You, you live a good life, don't get me wrong, okay? You live a, a better life than the average Nigerian, but every person falls within that range. And that is why it is more difficult for you to save money in Canada than, for, than it is for you to save money in Nigeria, especially if you have an above average job in these two places, okay? It's easier to save money in Nigeria than it is to save money in Canada. Yes, with all the inflation that is everywhere, with all the inflation that is both in Nigeria and Canada, you are still better off in Nigeria if you are an above average salary earner or person, okay? Like a rich person in Nigeria, you are better off staying in Nigeria in terms of financial, okay, I'm starting with the finances now. Now, the good thing about this place, the nuance to it, like I said, is that you can get so many things on, you know, credit, you can get so many nice things with your regular salary, okay? Your regular salary here, if once you have a job here and, you know, it doesn't have to even be a fantastic job. Once you have a job here, you'll be able to afford some basic things that some people in Nigeria might not be able to afford, right? But... In fact, to me, eh, what has cancelled all this whole talk I'm talking, what has just put the nail on the coffin for me is the amount of money people pay here as house rent. It trumps every other argument anybody wants to bring up from any other corner. Okay? What people pay here as house, as house rent. <laughs> But I think it's the same. It's not what I think. It's actually the same with, you know, the major countries, people jack back to all this, like, um, America, UK, um, Europe, Australia, all those developed countries is basically the same thing. The amount of money people pay as rent here. Basically, you're working to pay rent. You are basically, if you remove rent from your money, how much is remaining? Like, if you remove rent <laughs> alone, what people pay here for one month is what we pay in Nigeria for one year, sometimes two years. For the same structure right like so well structure in basically structure i don't mean like when you come down to the details of things so what you pay in nigeria is what people pay here in a month okay so as far as i'm concerned whatever financial metrics you want to use to, to give this argument this house rent thing has trumped the other one okay again i'm not a finance expert or anything like that but in my head with my layman calculation with my basic mathematics that i know Eh, eh, Canada is expensive, okay? But yeah, I asked you guys on my community to tell me some of your concerns that you have about relocating to Canada and I'll answer as a neutral party. Neutral in quotes. Neutral because I'm not looking to relocate here. I don't have any skin in the game. Aside the fact that my siblings live here, yeah, aside that, I don't have any special interest in Canada. So I feel like I can see things clearly. <laughs> me, as an outsider, I'm here to give my opinion 
also put your opinions in the comment section and please don't come for me okay like i'm giving my opinion don't come and say you don't know what you're talking about eh, 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 eh. not not this time please not on my channel okay go to the next one like you can argue my points you can disagree with me but please don't insult me or anybody in the comment section okay thank you um so the first one someone asked is as a mother of teenage and adolescent children how easy will, will it be to thrive in canada for me personally i think it is going to be easier for you with older children to thrive in canada okay that's my personal opinion most people that i know that come here with smaller infants is more difficult okay or smaller children it's more difficult you have you, your children need you almost full time but you need to work almost full time as well and you don't really have any friend or sister or anybody around to really keep your kids with right so for me personally i feel like um if you have if you come here with older children who can fend for themselves they go to school they take care of themselves they can clean they can even help help they can even help with the chores depending on how you train them then i feel like it is easier for it's going to be easier for you than it than it is for a mom with you know, small kids, toddlers, babies, it's, I feel like it's easier for you. Now, the next one is, how can someone move to Canada if it's not through student visa or visitation visa? PR. Uh, PR, that's the most common one, I think. Permanent residence through the skilled worker program, one thing, one thing, one thing. To be honest, let me know, let me know, I won't lie to you guys, eh? Before, before Neze, not even my sister, before Neze, you guys know her, Neze Vio, Neze Peperempe, before she moved to Canada, I started making these videos, I had no idea how all these things worked, like, all these skilled visa, skilled, I, I didn't, I didn't, like, I, 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 I had no interest in knowing how it works, like, right, I was going to tell myself that I did that, she didn't even give me, she didn't really tell me how this thing is, like, it's not a small thing, no, but me, all those while, I'm just like, hey, I'm located, okay, okay, it's when I started watching Neze's videos, and now I understood, okay, all this is how, PR works, this is how that one works. I've never had any interest in it, okay? Is it what is to relocate and start afresh in your late 30s? How soon can one get a professional job after one year of master's to qualify for PR? For me, I think it's easy to get a job here. Now, to get your exact job that you need, your dream job, might be the problem, okay? But I feel like it's easy for people to get jobs here. I think there are jobs here. It's just that you go like them, um, then the kind of job where you go want to, okay? And any job you get here, be, you know, rest assured that you can survive with this, right? But is it is it your dream? Is it what you want? You know, are you settling for less? So, um, I think that there are always ways to work around it. Like, if you want a professional job, there are ways to work around it. Because I've heard people say things like, oh, when you come here, you can be the best doctor in Nigeria. When you come here, you'll be driving Uber. It's not true. You don't have to. You don't have to go down that you don't have to go that that low okay there are certifications you can do there are exams you can take there are things you can do to kind of you know help you skip to the good parts okay you know get some waivers and stuff so that you don't have to start from scratch right so there are things to do. just do your research and hang around people who are upward and forward looking okay people who are very who know all these things okay so if you hang around such people if you do your research very well you would get a better job than anybody that just comes here and feels like you must start from scratch you don't have to start from scratch all the people that know that that came here did not start from scratch okay that's so that's where my argument comes from all the people that i know that came to this country did not start from scratch some even got better than what they had in nigeria so it's it just just do your research is it worth it this person asking is it worth it to relocate in your 30s for me you can relocate at any time it doesn't matter it just depends on what you are leaving behind okay if what you're leaving behind is not that fantastic then it is worth it it's it's never too late to start afresh for me i always see it as if what you are doing is not working for you then find the next thing find the next best thing okay you're in your 30s you're not in your 60s you're not you're not old okay you're still a young person as far as i'm concerned so Anything you have to do now, do it now. Don't wait till you are old and great and now start wishing and hoping and, and try. No, anything you can do now, do. So if what you are doing is not working for you and you're not comfortable and you feel like, you know, you get that message in your spirit that you have to move, then please move, okay? You might be shocked. You might move and live the best life ever, okay? And the next one is, how quickly does one adapt to the cold? I heard that children adapt easily compared to adults. Yes, children adapt easily compared to adults, but... Canada is cold though. Canada is cold. Let me not even let, let's not even skip skip that one. Canada is very, very cold. <laughs> I mean, it's very cold, but 
I think the misconception I had before I came was that, oh, it's so cold that even inside the house, you know, you have to wear jacket and all of that. So I used to think that, oh, because I remember then, oh, funny enough, anytime I, I do video calls with my sister, she's always wearing like singlet, normal top, and I'm like, are you not cold? She said, no, she's not cold, she's used to it, right? So I used to think that when me I come, I will not be used to it, so I will need to adjust. But no, actually, inside the house is not cold. Okay, now I'm in, I am, I'm in Alberta, I'm in Edmonton, and it gets really cold here. In fact, my sister said that it got to minus 40 at some point here. So it can get really cold here. Hey, Google, what's the temperature? Currently in Edmonton, it's minus one degree. Okay, so currently it is minus one degree, okay, minus one degree, and I'm even sweating, okay, <laughs> like, I'm not sweating so much, but I'm hot inside, because, you know, there's heater in the house, the windows are closed, if I want to feel a little bit cooler, I open the windows, if, like, I adjust the window according to how cold I want to feel, like, I can just leave it, when I want to sleep at night, I leave a small crack, but even at that, that small crack, sometimes I have to come and, you know, close it so I'm not too cold at night, then during the day, depending on how cold or hot I am, most times during the day, I'm just neutral, I'm not cold, I'm not hot, right, even as the temperature outside is very cold, I'm not hot, I'm not cold, I'm just normal, but when, let's say now, I do something and I start sweating and I want to feel cold, I just open the window a bit and it comes in like, <laughs> the strongest AC you've ever experienced in your life okay now going outside is a different ball game you guys <laughs> the other day i went to buy something and i went outside to take pictures or I, I felt cute you know i felt cute or whatever and i went to take pictures or more this finger is almost froze to death like i almost my fingers almost chopped off from the cold so i had to run back into the store and try and heat up my fingers right so outside is really really cold but I have not seen anybody that went back to Nigeria because they couldn't stand the cold, okay? So, for me, it's not a factor. Like, it's cold, but you are just... As far as you've not seen anybody that said, ah, I had to run back to Nigeria because I couldn't stand the cold in Canada, yeah, then it's not a factor at all, at all, at all. Someone said, moving abroad is fine because they made life easy for their people. At least their security, lights, good roads, hospital, and so on. But there, but there is not for lazy people because one has to work really smart, hard in order to have easy access to these things but training kids there is a 50 50 thing yes now let me address this part right so canada is actually a good country forget what all the things i've said so far about it's expensive is this or that for me this is a very beautiful country it's a very nice country like very peaceful country from what i've seen so far i don't know maybe it's the area i'm living maybe it's the people i'm living with but this seems like a very a good place to raise kids try this out uh, better this edmonton it's like a good place to raise kids it's so homey so nice so i don't know it's like it's like a better version of abuja do you get it's a very very nice place right now the thing is that canada is a very nice country but you need to work hard. It is not for lazy people. You can't come here and think that you will be as lazy as you were in Nigeria if you are a lazy person. You can't come here and think you can be as lazy as you were in Nigeria and still thrive. Hunger will finish you. He cold will finish you here, okay? Because you need to be able to afford basic things. So, and if you're not careful, you're going to remain average. Because like I said, the average person here is living a better life than the average person in Nigeria. So if you don't have a plan, if you don't have focus, if you don't have dreams, big dreams, and if you don't work really hard for those dreams, if you are very lazy, if you are mentally lazy, physically lazy, if you're not someone who, you know, is a go-getter, you're going to come here and remain average for the rest of your life, okay? So this country basically treats you the way you treat yourself. <laughs> basically but if you want to have a bright future if you want to increase your prospects if you want to have a very fantastic job you want to live a very 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 above average good life in canada you need to work really really hard like you need to work you need to study really hard you need to you know do it right certifications exams whatever whatever you need to do this system actually rewards hard work right so if you work very hard here you can get any job you want to get okay you can even get government job without any connection or anything like now the other part is Training kids is a 50-50 thing. Yes, now, <laughs> the downside to countries like this is that they have part ownership of your child, okay? Now, you born your child for Nigeria, or now you get the Pekin, but as you enter this country, you people are now sharing it, you and the government are now sharing it, so you can't just do anything you want to your child, like, you can't. <laughs> You can't, like, it's your child though. The nonsense is not your child, it's your child. It's your, she's burying your, he or she's burying your name. But you can't just do anything you want with your child, okay? And when it comes to raising kids, <laughs> you see that lazy man way of doing things that we do in Nigeria where, you know, you have everybody to do it except you. You have everybody raising your children except you. You people know yourselves now. Let's not even lie. Let's not pretend. We know ourselves. We know those of us that don't, 
you know, are not really involved in raising our kids, both male and female, we know ourselves. That thing cannot fly here. You see that thing of, oh, uh, house help is raising children, kids man is raising children, teachers are raising children, you know, grandparents are raising children, neighbors, aunties, everybody's raising your child except you. You see that, that culture, it's not going to work. It's not going to fly here because here, everybody minds their own business. Okay, now you can have your community here, you can have your friends here. I'll get into that later. But it's not the same thing, okay? You have to do almost everything yourself. Even if your children are in school, you're in daycare. You know how in Nigeria, once your child turns, you know, one year plus, the school will be telling you, oh, don't worry, don't wear that pass for your child, we'll put train your child for you. It's me that even sitting that I see, I'm not interested. Like, let's wait until my child is two years plus, because I don't want to continue it at home. You know, they'll be trying to encourage you as a mother, don't worry, don't be wearing her diaper at home so that you don't spoil what we've done. I'll be like, please. Leave my child, I'm not complaining about how much diaper is, okay? When they reach that age where it is easier for me, then I'll do it, okay? But Nigeria, they encourage you, they try they, they encourage your child, they try to, you know, teach your child to feed independently, you know, if what you even bring for your child is not good, they will tell you. You know, they try to, you know, it's almost like they try to choke mouths a lot in how we raise our kids. So, you know, in schools in Nigeria, they teach your children how to pray, they teach your children how to, you know, read Bible, they teach them gospel, even in church, you know, all those things. Here, like my sister told me, oh, I don't, I don't have first-hand experience. My sister told me that if you like, let your child eh be wearing diapers six years. They will help you wear your child that diaper. Nobody's going to portray your child for you. In fact, sometimes they tell you to portray your child before you bring your child to their daycare if you are, if it's going to be a problem. Like they will tell you who oh, her like we're not doing it. You have to do that work before you bring your child here, right? So here, as parents, you have to be more involved. It doesn't matter whether your the husband has one big job and one thing, one thing. You have to be involved, except you want your your wife to die, you know, because of the stress. You have to be involved here. Anyway, the truth is that my, my brother-in-law has always been an involved person, even from Nigeria, right? So it was easy for him to adjust, adjust. Like now, he does all the school runs, wakes them up, dresses them for school, feeds them, do everything, packs their bags, everything for the, for the kids, and then takes them to school, okay? My sister will just sleep with her baby. When she wakes up, you know, she will take care of the baby. Him, he does every other thing for the children, okay? He goes, he picks them from school, prepares their lunch, prepares their... Everything, like he does everything, you know else for them that my sister cannot do because you know she just had a newborn baby so everybody has to be involved raising children is not something that you if you leave you can leave your children no you can do anyhow if you do anyhow you see anyhow because here the system actually encourages let me not say encourages her but the system can aid your child not listen to the parents right the system can help your child to disregard the parents so that in nigeria where if, if you're even on the road and your child's talking to you anyhow, you will see neighbors or one auntie or one random stranger can say, Hey, don't talk to your mother like that. Ah, madam, no, 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 Young boy, young man, your young boy or whatever, don't do that to your mother. Here, people just look and pass. They might whisper to themselves or just... But here, people look and pass. You'll be, your child will be throwing tantrum on the floor, scattering everything. People will mind their business and pass, okay? So, you have to be very, 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 very involved in raising your kids here you know you, you have to be very involved you know i feel like it is the system here forces you to do the right thing in quotes that's how i see it because that rubbish that we do in nigeria is not it where you are every other person is raising your child except you it's not it let's just tell ourselves the truth that that's that's not good okay so i feel like here is even a better option okay so the next one is can someone with ond move to canada and work there if no what options do people without big certificates have to move there anybody can get a job here you don't need to have any certificate or anything like there are opportunities for you to work here now the question is what type of job <laughs> that's the question the type of job you will get is the issue but whether you get a job here of course you get a job here of course you get a, a, a good enough job for you to survive with okay but you can't remain there especially if you come here with pr you have to do things to age you to get a better job you either you go back to school or you you know write certificates or do whatever or get working experience i don't know Sha, but all i know is that you'll get a job but what kind of job is the question what are the pros and cons of relocating to canada as a couple or as a family for me personally i don't like i don't think there are any like specific these are the pros these are the cons i think it just depends on you as a person and you know your goals your vision and your partner as well kind of person you are married to and all that okay but for me personally i will always favor moving with your family wherever you go i don't believe in separated families i don't believe in husband works in canada wife works in nigeria for me what is the essence of having a family if i'm going to be living single in nigeria 
what's the essence of having kids if they're going to be fatherless in Nigeria or motherless in, in Canada? Like, it doesn't make sense to me personally. Okay, sorry for anybody that's doing that, but for me personally, it doesn't make sense. So, I will always encourage people anywhere you are going, carry your whole family and go there. It might be more difficult adjusting, it might be more difficult to get some things in place. But these countries actually understand, like Canada, for instance, they understand that it is not easy for immigrants. So there are so many aids, so many things that can help you settle in faster, settle in better. So many communities, so many, you know, different rich rich here that can help you settle in faster as a new immigrant, especially with children, okay? So I will always encourage people to move with their children and their family immediately with their spouses. But another thing I need to point out is this, right? One thing I always tell people is this, if your spouse is not in agreement, please do not move okay if you're a woman because we have so many cases of women who want to move to canada or america or uk or wherever uh, australia but their husbands are not in support if your or their husbands are not don't really want to if your husband does not want to please leave him where he is okay you people should just stay there where he is even for husbands as well if you want to move and your wife does not want to then you guys should stay in nigeria and make it work make it work okay it's usually very very difficult if you have to drag an unwilling partner to leave their comfort zone and come to a different country like it's going to be very very difficult in fact dragging a reluctant partner is even one thing Drag dragging a partner that does not even want it at all is a, a different ball game don't don't try it <laughs> recipe for disaster don't try it so for me always walk around it look for a way to convince your partner to be excited for you to, for you people to move together because moving is a very 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 draining experience leaving your comfort zone and moving to a different country would test your mental health like it is physically and mentally spiritually draining if you if if you decide to move right so you don't need dragging an unwilling partner as one of your obstacles like it's not worth it okay um, someone said my biggest concern is the aspect of having children and not being able to have helps like here in nigeria yeah that, that one is a <laughs> it is a fact of life like it is a given that you are except you are one kind very very rich person and even if you're very very rich it's still not easy <laughs> child care here is very very expensive even getting in fact child care i mean putting children in daycare and stuff like that is expensive if you don't have those concessions that come with you know being a pr or whatever is expensive right but even at that, trying to get helps on nannies and stuff like that is expensive or get cleaners and stuff is very expensive, okay? So, in, in most cases, it is not even worth it. In fact, in most cases, the wives will have to will prefer to resign and stay at home and do these chores themselves than for them to pay somebody. Because if you're not careful, especially if your job is not that fantastic, if you're not careful, your salary will be going straight into childcare. Like your salary will just as you, as you receive salary, you carry everything, add extra, add your husband's own joy, and give the caretaker or, or nanny or whatever. Okay, if you're not careful, so you see women now deciding, you know what, it's not worth it for me to actually have a job. It's better for me to stay at home and take care of my kids, right? So, um, having a help is something you have to just. You have to just get used to it. You have to just deal with it. There's nothing you can do about it. And for me personally. It, I understand that it's difficult, but it is doable. My sister, I've talked to my sister several times, and she has told me that, see, eh, you just have to make your life easy. You have to buy gadgets, buy things that will make your life easy. Both kitchen gadgets, cleaning gadgets, all those things. You have to buy the ones that will make your life easy. You also have to start training your children early to be independent. You have to start training your children early to pick up after themselves and do some things, okay? Um, but for babies, it's not easy. That's why I had to even come and, and take care of my sister during this period because it's not easy. Like, with newborn babies, it's not easy. Easy. That's why you see people always trying to get their moms to come and do omogo and stuff like that. It's not easy. And even their moms finish doing omogo, they will beg the moms to stay longer. Yeah, it's not easy. So it's one of those things that you have to just understand that it's not easy. So it's either you move for a better life in quotes or you stay back and be looking for cheap house help. <laughs> like <laughs> you know whatever it is just choose your struggle there is a struggle both ways choose your struggle however from people that i have talked to they did not have you heard somebody that said ah, i had to leave canada and come back to nigeria because i did not have help in canada i've not seen maybe in my, in, i'm sure it is possible that that one has happened especially if you are one privileged you know woman like that yes but for the average person they make do they, they they survive it they don't have two heads i always tell myself if people are doing this thing that they did not die then me i mean who am i like i will do it i'll be fine now the next one someone is saying that her concern is that is the husband willing to support help and live a 50 50 lifestyle with wife because one one person cannot do a broad thing alone 
like I just said, you, everybody has to pitch in. All hands have to be on deck, okay? Now, in cases where, let's say now the man has a very good job and he's earning more and he's bringing more to the family in terms of financially, then, you know, and his job is very demanding, then, you know, it might not be 50 50, it might be 70, 70, um, 30, 75, 25, whatever, depending on his availability, right? But everybody, like, everybody has to do their best. Like, if, if money is not enough, you as a wife has to pitch in. If house help, if, um, you know, the chores is overwhelming, the husband has to pitch in, okay? So, either way, like, you just need a very willing partner, a happy, <laughs> a happy willing partner because you get why, you get why. If you don't have a partner that is willing, you're going to suffer, okay? Because even when I see the things that my brother-in-law does here, I'm like, oh, my, this guy, they try you. But he's doing it with joy, he's doing it with happiness, playing with his kids, doing, doing it with joy, right? So, it's not an easy job, like, heh. <laughs> Now, the second one is, are the couples ready to start from the scratch? Then be ready to carry your kids anywhere you are going, like, no you time. I understand this part, but again, not everybody has to start from scratch, okay? There are levels to this ish, okay? Not everybody has to start from scratch. Like I said, people around me here are doing better jobs than they did in Nigeria. Okay, I know one person who... It's not like he's starting from scratch, but he has to, you know, get some certifications and all of that to be able to, you know basically get concessions so that he can practice like he was practicing in Nigeria. So he's starting in he started from scratch in quotes in terms of trying to get certified and pass certain exams and all of that. But when it comes to the actual job he's not starting from scratch. Okay. So um this not having you time I yeah not having you time it depends if your kids are in daycare like my sister's kids go to school and daycare right so almost throughout the day they're not around so she has her time if she wants her time the only thing is that now she has a newborn baby so she cannot even have her time again she's not, her time is now on the newborn baby but it's not as bad as people are making it sound there are there are there are daycares that you can drop your kids in during the day um but yeah I get your points normally you can't on normal, like on weekend now, you cannot just go anywhere you want and leave your kids with who, you know. Again, now, let me go to this point, okay, because this video is getting too long. Now, as much as we say, oh, Canada is very, everybody minds their business, everybody does their own thing, nobody cares, nobody cares, this, that, this, that. As much as that can be true, I have seen that it is not as lonely as people say it to be. I think it depends on the person as well. But for my sister's situation, she is not lonely here in Canada. She has a small community of about seven or eight families that are doing things together. They have fun together. She has friends here. You know, she has help here. Like, she has a neighbor that helps her with her kids from time to time. Help her to pick her kids. Like, when she was pregnant and she couldn't, and her husband was in Nigeria and she couldn't do some things, her neighbors were helping her. She tries to help them as well. You know, they just, they live. To me, my sister even has more friends here than me I have in Nigeria. Like, facts. <laughs> I was telling her, you, you're in Canada, but you have more Nigerian friends. You have more friends. You have more meaningful relationships than I have and I live in Nigeria so it just depends on the person granted it's quite easy for families or it's easier for people that come with their children to form that relationship because you know your children can be a reason why you bond another family even a white family your children can be the reason why you are bonding with your neighbors you know so it's easier for people with children and even if you don't have anybody to bond with your children your husband uh you know you have that social interaction with them indoors right especially if you guys are indoors during winter and stuff like that you and you have a husband and you have children you know you're not you're not lonely okay you're not lonely you're not alone right but um when it comes to loneliness in general, I feel like it is very, very, very subjective. Very, very subjective. In fact, my son was telling me, because, okay, what am I saying? This one, I should just give birth now. She has had visitors here and there. I was like, me in Nigeria, when I give birth, how many visitors did I have? Not that many, okay? And then she was telling me that during the summer, that you will see activities. So activities are poor. Like, you will be the one running away from activities, okay? So, there is a community here, and I think that community is also growing. Because more people are leaving Nigeria and coming here, right? That community is also growing. So, when it comes to being lonely, having friends, and people here are generally very helpful. Again, you know that the way this PR system works, it's almost like they are bringing the best of the best from Nigeria, okay? In general, not that, like... Anyway, you guys get what I mean, right? It's almost like they're bringing like our best hands from Nigeria. She has a, a, a friend, my sister has a, a neighbor who is a dentist, like, so you get like, she has dentists, you know, she has lawyers, she has doctors, she has 
um, you know, all these kind of people, photographers and stuff like that, you know, people people from all walks of life that are doing very well or that we are doing very well in Nigeria that came here and are now her friends as well. So all this to say that, you know, that social life, loneliness and stuff like that is very, very subjective. If you want to have a very good social life, you would have a very good social life, okay? But you just have to work for it. You have to, you know, do your own part to get those things for yourself, okay? So I'm also seeing more questions about, you know, how relevant is your degree in the job market and stuff like that. So it depends on your degree, but generally, if you are doing some professional courses or if you're a professional like you know you're an accountant you're a lawyer you're a doctor you cannot just come here and integrate into the system seamlessly you will have to do some extra certifications and write some extra exams and get some extra things for you to be able to start practicing your profession here okay but for people like tech people that are in tech and stuff like that you don't need to you don't need to switch or you don't need to do anything like specially extra but you know you need to find out like you need to find out for your particular degree what you need to do to get a good job here okay yeah that's it pretty much so yeah here are my general thoughts on whether you should relocate to canada or uk or america or all of these countries or whether you should stay in nigeria is life better in nigeria or is life better abroad the general consensus or the general idea is that life is better abroad however is it um i think the answer to that question depends on the person it's always going to depend on the person okay because as you are in nigeria complaining oh nigeria is hard nigeria is hard some people are balling some people are living the good life some people are eating good some people are some people cannot even imagine leaving nigeria for another country like they are in they are in in their wealth in, in fact they are <laughs> not explaining it <laughs> they are they are living the best life they can ever imagine in nigeria while some people are in Nigeria suffering, crying, you know, going through one thing or the other. The same can be said for Canada. Some people are in Canada here, they are living their best life. Don't be deceived. Hey, don't be deceived. Some people are in Canada living good life. Okay, they are living, they are living fantastic lives. Okay, they are making money, they are buying properties, they are selling, they are this, they are that. They are making, they are doing, they have good jobs, they are making cash, they are doing fantastically well in their jobs. There are many people here that are running for office safe, like Nigerians that left Nigeria and came here and they are running for office and nobody is looking at them with side eyes like, you are not Igbo, you are not Yoruba, you are not this, you are not that, okay? So don't be deceived, people are living very fantastic lives here in Canada. Is life difficult in Canada? Yes, it can be difficult, but there are people living very, very fantastic lives here. So it depends on you as a person. While there are other people on the flip side who are living from hand to mouth here, who wish, who are regretting every day that they left Nigeria. It is what it is. It depends on you. It depends on how your life is. It depends on the work you decide to put in. It depends on the information you have. It depends on who you surround yourself with. It depends on how social you are. It depends on, it, everything just depends on you. Okay, but just know that you cannot be a lizard in Nigeria and come here and be an alligator. Okay, I've heard people say that thing before and it's so funny, but it is true. You cannot be a cat in Nigeria and come here and be a lion. Okay, it is fundamentally who you are as a person that determines who you are going to be in whatever country you go to okay so from what i have seen people who were doing well in nigeria came here and did better people who were doing badly in nigeria came here and started struggling too like they were thinking japan is the is the be all fix all of their problems they came here and they continue to struggle if you're not financially literate you are going to be in debt you think because you have access to all this credit facility and this that this that you just be collecting collecting your mates are buying houses six months you to you go and buy house does it make financial sense these are the things you need to think about before you just come here and see people living the good life and want to just follow suits as people are dancing you want to be dancing you don't know that <laughs> in front is actually somebody that is dancing on fire and people at the back are just following the footsteps. They don't know that it's fire that is in front. Anyway, how does this thing even make sense? But anyway, I'm sure you guys get my point. But yeah, so you have to be really, really careful when you come to this country and, you know, want to make some decisions. You have to be very, very careful. However, when it comes to blowing, hammering, okay, those, you know what it means, what it means to blow and to hammer. It's easier for you to blow and hammer in Nigeria than it is for you to blow and hammer here in Canada. But are people blowing and hammering in, in Canada, people that came from Nigeria as immigrants, are they blowing and hammering in Canada? Yes, they are every single day, okay? So, yeah, basically it all depends on you. But anyway, you guys, I have talked so much. This video is so long. Oh my God, I don't even look forward to editing this video. But I just wanted to have that 
conversation with you guys so let us know in the comment section what you guys think i want to know your opinions i want to know your thoughts if you disagree with me i want to know as well okay just be respectful you know that's it that's all i ask okay thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys